G'day guys, so I'm not finished with Ark yet, but I'm going to give Atlas a bit of a look. So I did download this game at release, and this was the first boat that I built. It's an armoured sloop carrying three flamethrowers, which I wanted to use as a support boat to get in and light the other boats on fire. Now sloops are quite easy to destroy, so I did put two layers of armour on it. Here I didn't see the defensive cannons and sailed way too close to this base. And the boat was really lucky to get out of this. It took a lot of damage on the lower panels. And it seemed to be from the majority of that damage being from near misses hitting the water. And the splash damage coming back onto the actual hull of the boat instead of the armour plate. So what I set out to do is put another layer of armour lower down to see if it prevents that. Anyway, this video is going to be full tutorial on how I built that boat. So the hole in the deck is laid, and you've only got a 1x6 that we can build off. So two flat ceilings at the front, followed by two hatch frames. Then filling the rest with ceilings. And get the trapdoors in. Now two half walls at the front. And box that in with two full walls. So like Ark, you can flip and you can cycle the snap points. You are a bit more limited though. And put some half stairs up to that platform at the front. And hatch frame on top of that. We're really limited for storage space on the sloop, so we've got to store things where we can. And it's usually under the floor. And a triangle of floor at the front. Now place three door frames around that front hatch frame in the deck. I'm sorry if this isn't as fluid as the ARC tutorials because I have to build all this in the actual official game rather than going into single player. And it's much harder. Put a ceiling on top. And an angle the door frame back from that. Okay, so now box in the back with three walls. And extend two half walls forward. And bridge the two half walls with the ceiling. With half steps down at the front. Now you want to get some furniture in because it'll be too hard to put in later. So first a food larder to feed the crew. We put that right at the back. And a ship resource box just in front of that.
now a half wall up and box it in using a hatch frame so we can access them furniture inside Put the trapdoor on and a sloped door at the back of there. And extend the ceiling out one more at the back. Okay, so now it's best to get the sails in. I'm going to be using two small speed sails. Okay, so the front one is obstructed. To clear the obstruction, I need to get rid of the half stairs at the front. So the sail's gone in, and now I have to put the stairs back down. But before I do that, I want to put the steering wheel down, as that'll be obstructed as well. So as close as you can get it behind the rear mast. And then half stairs down behind the steering wheel. There's really not much space on this boat. Okay, so before I go any further, I'll put a gun mount out each side. Pay careful attention about how I line it up with the planks on the deck. Things can mess up if you put it any further forward than this. And place the other side in the exact same spot, using those deck planks to line it up. And place the guns on top. Place a door in the front. And now I have to replace the stairs that were causing the obstruction from earlier. Now under the front hatch frame I'm going to leave the two storage boxes. Okay, so now it's time to put the armour plate on. So off that hatch frame that we just put the boxes under, use sloped walls down from the side. Now 
and extend that all the way to the back. And do the same thing on the other side. Now at the back, put some roof corners down. And just a slope ceiling to finish it off, right at the back. And do the same thing at the front. And that's the lower skirt finished, so that'll prevent the splash damage hitting the hole from near misses. Or at least in theory, but we'll test that later in this video. Okay, so now for the second layer. Now the interesting thing about sloped ceilings is the lower layer will hold up the second layer. You don't have to have any support for it. So start by putting a sloped ceiling on top of the gun then place one next to it each side and then pick up the first slope ceiling and they'll stay stuck there even though nothing's technically holding them up now using triangular walls I'm going to create a recess around those guns creating a recess means they won't take as much splash damage from strikes around it Now I'll just create a bit of a protective visor using the catwalks above the guns. And do the same thing on the other side. So that's our flamethrower ports. Now extend that second layer of armour to the front and the back. Now instead of using the roof corners that we did on the bottom layer, I'm going to use triangular roofs. And do the same thing on the other side. So two triangular roofs on each side with the same orientation, so the point up. And that'll protect our front cannon. At the back do the same as the bottom layer, so the corner roofs and the slope ceiling in the centre. Now technically we've hit the outside limit of the boat. We can't build any higher or any further out to the sides, but we can cheat a little bit. By building a full square off half a square below the limit, we can build half a square above it. So run a half wall down along the sloped outside ceilings. And then you can start building the final layer of armour. So like before, just build straight over the gun port and keep going forward and then pick up the one over the gun port. Now the top layer, just like the one beneath it, uses two triangular ceilings at the front.
And the other side is built exactly the same way. Use four triangular settings at the back as well, just like at the front. That'll leave space for the rear cannon. Okay, so now you will find a problem. When you jump on the steering wheel. You're too enclosed, so it chucks you down into first person. Now to overcome that, we need to demolish the side armor. Next to the wheel. And as you can see, now we're in third person, and visibility is much better. But we can get away with sloping that armour the other way. So that should be good enough to protect you from snipers. Okay, so the boat's now very close to being finished. Now unfortunately this is something I should have done first. And that's place the ammo box and the bed down. So behind the rear hatch frame in the deck, place this half wall down. And then two ceilings forward off the bottom. Now the ammo box can go underneath the rear trapdoor. Now unfortunately you are going to have to demolish those two hatch frames. Luckily they're not supporting anything so it's not a major problem. I should have put the bed in first right at the start of the build. As the hatch frames above it obstruct the placement of it. And yeah, you have to get rid of both of them. So I put the bed down on the lowest front ceiling. And replace the hatch frames. So if you watch this video before trying to build it, you should do that right at the start. Before those two hatch frames are placed. I'm trying to play with an Xbox controller on the PC and it doesn't and it's not fully supported yet. That's why I keep punching and trying to get things out. Yeah, 
You have to keep something in your hand to build or it's a complete nightmare. Anyway, so that's the floor complete. You'll be able to spawn on that. You usually spawn on the main deck. It'll push you through the ceiling up into the main deck. But sometimes you might have to open the trap door and jump up. Okay, so the last thing to do is to mount the cannons. You can either use mediums front and back or heavy front and back or a mix of the two. The first time I built this, I put a medium at the front, but I'll mix things up. I'll put a heavy at the front this time. I'll have to remove the top triangles for the heavy cannon. Make sure it's aligned perfectly because you can't traverse a heavy cannon. Only elevate it. And make sure you can still get to the boxes. To get around the mast, you'll have to duck. I'll place the medium cannon at the back to deter people from chasing us. On its sister ship, the one next to us in the shipyard next to us, I used a heavy cannon at the back. So once you rake the flamethrowers up the side of a larger boat and turn to flee, that'll align the large cannon onto them. Once that heavy cannon's mounted at the front, you can actually get those triangular ceilings back in for a bit more armour. Anyway guys, that is the finished boat. Now what you want to do is go and level it up, because you want a bit more weight on this boat, just to keep it speed up. And raise the crew members to five. Now once you do get some crew members, you'll need at least one for each sail. You'll find they will sit in behind the top layer of armour. But you may want to place a half wall in, just to fully protect them. Just like that. So it was time to outfit the boat and float it. And let's go for HMAS Slater. It looks a bit like a Slater. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just use the dock cannon here to test the armour before taking it out. Make sure it does actually protect the boat, since they do do area damage. I'm trying to get it as low as possible to see if that splash damage 
gets to the hull itself. It's incredibly irritating how you, as soon as you get near the surface, it bobs you up to the top. I can understand the reason for it, but it's hugely bloody irritating. So there was no damage to the hull, other than the natural decay it gets from not being moored or anchored. Which is also bloody irritating. One thing I don't know the answer to is whether I should use two small speed sails or one medium speed sail. To get the most speed, I use two small sails as it uses two out of two of the sail allocation instead of 1.7. But I don't know the actual answer which is faster. You can still get around the medium sail by ducking the same way as the small sail. Anyway guys, I will show one battle with the Ship of the Damned. Um, this was the most destructive battle it was in. I killed three other of these ships earlier and they didn't break through any panels and none of the hull was damaged. So the armour does work but in this case this battle they did blow through the panel so this is the one that I'll show. It's fairly hard to do by yourself aligning these cannons. So I'm just going to start the battle off by hitting him with the front heavy cannon. The game really does run badly for me, so that's why you get all the stutters and slowdowns. Anyway, I'm going to get him to follow me, so I can use that rear cannon, the rear medium cannon. So I've got to try and match my speed to his, so I was going a bit fast. They de-aggro on sloops quite quickly. I think it's mostly my internet that makes the game run so badly. As I, Sometimes the other people run around just fine and I can't move at all. But with that said, Ark on Xbox runs just fine. I've just got to slow down so we can close distance. But I don't want to get too bloody slow.
So as you can see the back end he's taking a big pounding. So he actually blew the cannon up, or at least the ceiling holding the cannon up. He's only one hit off being destroyed so I'm going to swing him around and use the heavy cannon to finish him off. Not an easy task when you're by yourself. I'll speed this up. Anyway, so yeah, we did lose two two panels on the back, so a ceiling and a a slope ceiling and a normal ceiling. Anyway, I'm just going to jump below deck and show you what damage the actual hull took, because that's what's important. So the damage you see is natural decay, so it's down about four thousand and seventy. 4080. So that rear panel where the armor was blown off did take one bit of splash damage. But everything else is intact. Anyway, as I said, I went on to blow up three more of these ships and they didn't get through the armour and the hull took no damage, so at least the armour does work. So HMAS Slater did finally meet its end by running into a submerged structure. I hit it at full speed and it stripped off like three panels and it sunk within 10 seconds. It happened just after this but I didn't record it. Unfortunately. Anyway guys, I've got a lot of more ARC videos to do. Going back like six months. i just got to get to do them. This video has gone for ages, sorry about that. Um, It takes a lot more for me to record on PC than it does on Xbox.